to bounce bounce while I get this little tripod thing all fixed or whatever. Yep, there it goes. It's all solid, I think, now. Of course, every time I move the table, it moves. So, it's okay. <laughs> hey, it's Monday, June 4th. It's June. Can you believe it's June? I cannot believe it's June. This is the sixth month of the year. Mm -hmm. It's just crazy to me, crazy, that we are six months into the year. At the end of this month, we will be halfway through the year. Yeah, crazy. So, anyway. Yep, June 4th, Monday. Um, have you ever just spent years and years and years trying to, like, do something and then finally do it, like, somewhat okay yeah well you know sarah jessica parker perfected the whole sock bun thing many many years ago on sex and the city and um i have bought every single contraption i've used every single trick tip whatever my capability my i just i don't i can't get it up in the ponytail and then twist it into the you know sock bun thing to get it to lay perfectly, well, guess what, y'all? It's not perfect, by all means. Is it perfect? <laughs> it is still a mess, which, you know, buns are supposed to be messy. But for the first time, I have something finally that I am pleased with. I did this like at nine o'clock this morning, and I haven't touched it since. Now, it's a bit more messy now because I have crawled into the crawl space up underneath the house a couple of times because I'm working on something. But, um, yeah. So, don't mind the sock bun and the fact that I have brushed back a sweaty mess or whatever because <laughs> I have been busy today. But anyway, yeah, there you go. Um, so, there's that. And it's hot outside. And I say it's hot here. It's hot for Montana. It is, um, I think it got up to 92 today. 92. I had all the windows open. I closed them all. The air is on. Um, but what's nice is the high tomorrow is like 72. So I can open all the windows up and shut the air off again. And I can do that for a few days and it'll be back up to the 90s. Um, so there's that. And then, if anyone is interested, you know, I did a bit of complaining last week about our car, our Jeep. Um, we picked it up last Thursday. Again, the dealership was just so, 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 so apologetic. And um, they didn't charge us anything. They had messed up when they had put in the new radiator. They had somehow broken the wire or whatever that connects the fan to everything so they had to go through and fix that so um right now as of last thursday the jeep is okay as of right now <laughs> fingers crossed it stays that way yes 92 and I don't think 92 is like the average temp my best friend came last year at this time and it did not get out of the 70s that was I think typical Montana weather so um yeah I think we're about 15 to 20 degrees higher than the average temp so um oh yes and Montana does see in fact last year we got um 96, 97, 98 degrees with like a heat index of 100, 101, 102 or whatever. So it gets very, very hot. The difference though is the, without the humidity, it's not sticky. But when you go out, you feel like the sun is just like that much closer to you. So you, to me, it's like sunglasses don't work. It just like goes straight through the sunglasses and you feel like it's just, it's just like directly on your skin. So, last summer was the first summer that I actually was like, why is it so hot and gross and everything? 
yeah so yeah it is um warm today but what's nice is tomorrow the high is only in like mid like low 70s and it'll be like that for a couple days and then it's creeping back up to the 80s so there you go and before we move on to the martini I gave them a special post this morning, but I feel like I need to do it here. My dear parents, if you see Janelle Heard Stevenson here or Mike Stevenson here, they are my parents and they are celebrating a wedding anniversary. I am so, so, so excited that they've got 41 years together and hopefully many, 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 many more. Um, it's definitely been a trying, past couple of years so if there's any um marriage to follow it's theirs because um they've been tested <laughs> so happy anniversary to my dear parents so there you go so now it's time for martini monday and i figure with summer i mean school's out school last day of school for montana was on friday so, um, I guess it's now appropriate to like celebrate summer since like I think every school is out. So, um, we are going to do the Watermelon Jolly Rancher Martini because I think that um, summer and watermelon, you know, just goes together. You don't ever hear about watermelon in November, December, January. So, here we go. Summer kickoff, watermelon Jolly Rancher Martini. And I'm not gonna lie, the only Jolly Ranchers I like are the watermelon Jolly Ranchers. There you go. Okay, shake it with ice. Then you need watermelon schnapps. Now I'm not gonna lie, for the longest, I did not buy watermelon pucker. Because I'm like, ooh, Watermelon, watermelon liqueur, Ugh. whatever. Guess what? It's awesome. Mix it with a little bit of cranberry juice, and it's wonderful. Um, you need vodka, you need grenadine, and you need club soda. So, here is my glass, and let's get mixing. You need... Um, one and a half parts vodka. Now I sent you guys a task a couple weeks ago to ask if you could find the 360 brand in the South. Have you done it for me yet? Just hop into, you know, I know in Alabama it was the ABC store. In Alabama it was the ABC store. And, um, I mean, also, whatever beverage shops or whatever. Head into whatever beverage shop you got and see if the 360 brand is available. Like I've said before, they are a favorite of mine. I did not discover them until here. So, yeah. Uh, you need one part watermelon plucker. And then... Let's see, one half part grenadine. One half part grenadine. And then we're gonna shake all this up and if you hold on to that club soda. I see everybody, I like tons of people coming in and out. See, again, that's what's weird about Facebook is it tells you how many people are watching, but you've got more people actually commenting and everything. So, it's weird. All right, so we're going to shake all that together and you're going to pour. And then you're going to take that club soda. Now, it did not give me a, an amount with club soda. So, obviously, I'm thinking like a dash, something like that. Obviously, it's going to add some fizz to it. I'm not that big on fizzy alcoholic drinks. 
So you're just gonna top it off with a little bit of club soda. Which, does club soda have any flavor? I can't even recall the last time I've had club soda. Mm, yeah, no flavor, purely carbonation. Yep, yep, so hopefully it doesn't taste like that. All right, so here we go. Um, Watermelon Jolly Rancher Martini. And guess what? It tastes like a Watermelon Jolly Rancher. Again, the only Jolly Rancher's worth um, having. So there you go. Very, very, very good. Okay, so tonight, like I said, Friday was the last day of school here in Montana for um, the children. Of course, I know the schools in the South, they got out like two weeks ago, a week and a half ago, something like that. So I know many parents are already dreading the fact that their kids are gonna be home for the summer. They are going to be bored and they're not, and the parents aren't gonna have any ideas of how to keep their children entertained. So I'm here to help you parents now, mind you, these activities that I share are purely dependent upon age and your interest of your child. So depending on your child, it changes. Don't put sidewalk chalk in your child's box if your child is 13 years old. Most of the time, children that are 13 don't care about child, um, sidewalk chalk. So, this is just general ideas. Now, most of these were purchased at do the dollar store, Dollar Tree, whatever you want to call it. I call it dollar store because it's just generic and you can bunch, you know, bundle all of them into one place or whatever. So, with that being said, head to Target. Target has these great big bins. You can get, I think it was a two pack. For $4.99, I think. $4.99, I think. This is what you want. You want to create an arsenal of supplies. That way, so when your child comes to you and says, I am bored, you can easily pull something out and say, guess what? No, you're not. And hand them something. If they still say, well, I don't want to do that. Well, guess what? They don't have a choice because they're bored. This will work. So, <laughs> Uh, yeah, this is why I don't have children, because I am a, um, well, you come to me with a complaint, I give you an option, you're going to take it. Um, and unfortunately, now we're in the time where they're like, no, you need to, you know, work with your child. I think some has got to stop. You're the parent, you decide what happens. All right, so first and foremost, before you, now, mind you, this bin right here can hold a crap ton of stuff, crap ton of activities. So, get ready. I'm going to go through these pretty um, quickly. Now, you can go to Home Depot, Lowe's, whatever, and you can get this roll of paper. It's thin super, super thin or whatever, you can get this roll of paper. You can get it at Walmart. I think actually I bought this one at Walmart. Um, but you can get it at um, Lowe's or Home Depot for like two bucks, three bucks, something like that. This is something that's super easy for you to roll out across the floor and tape. They can draw, they can paint, whatever. It is really thin, so if you paint, you probably do want something underneath it. But this paper right here, perfect for drawing, whatever. All right, Play-Doh. What child doesn't like Play-Doh? If you want to, you can put the ingredients to make Play-Doh into, um, into the box if you want, but if you can go to the dollar store and buy, this is four containers of Play-Doh for a buck, that will keep your child entertained for a bit. Of course, um, cards, card games. You can go to Target, you can go to Walmart, you can go to Dollar Store, whatever. 
card games, Uno, or regular deck cards. Teach them how to play solitaire. Solitaire, guess what, means one player. Uno, two players, or more. Card games. Tons of card games options, you know, available on Amazon for super cheap. Do that. Um, marbles. I don't think I've seen a child playing marbles in years upon years. That is probably like the most fascinating concept to a child if you were to introduce them to that. Teach them how to play marbles. Again, at Walmart for less than a buck, like 96 cents, I think. All right, younger children, who doesn't love bubbles? Bubbles, Walmart's got them, Dollar Store's got them, bubbles. This is a great big stick of them. And I think I'm going to be sharing a post like later on this month where you take a um, one of these and you like um, tape it or strap it to a pole or the side of a porch or something like that. That way so they can easily just um, put the handle in and out and it's a no spill method or whatever. Hey. Shaving cream. You're going to laugh. The shaving cream excites children to no end. Get the gel kind because, of course, I don't, I didn't plan on doing this, so let me get my rag ready or whatever. The gel, I don't think this is gel kind, I think it's actually the cream kind. It is the cream kind. Anyways, spread, put it directly onto whatever surface you want. It doesn't matter. Guess what? If you have a really dirty table, do that. Just put it on the dirty table because this, so there's something special. There's something inside a shaving cream that just breaks down all the crud that's on table. But anyways, they can sit there and spread it around, whatever. They love it. Throw in some toothbrushes, throw in some Barbies, some dolls, some cars, some popsicle sticks, whatever. Shaving cream amuses children to no end. The gel kind, you put it on there and just push it a little bit because the gel kind doubles up, like triples, and yeah. Anyway, um, shaving cream is something that's just mind blown. My, you know, it's just, it does. Shaving cream is like one of my go-to things. When I taught pre-K, shaving cream was it. At the end of the day, like if I got off work at 5.30, at five o'clock I put the children at tables. I put shaving cream all over the tables. And while they sat there and played the shaving cream, I cleaned my room. Parents showed up. Children were easily able to wash their hands. The shaving cream just brushed off their clothes. And it was, it cleaned the tables for me. So all I had to do at the end of the day was take a little bit of, you know, cleaner and wipe it off and I was good. Shaving cream, y'all, for the win. All right, now, with all of the, um, I know the letter boards and light boards and all that stuff and everything, you can get them for super cheap. Like, my husband bought this for me as a stocking stuffer for Christmas at Shopco, I think, here. So here is a light board with all of the little pieces. You'd be surprised if you just hand this to children what they get interested in. Again, you just gotta support their creativity. You just hand them something and see where their mind goes. I know a lot of children right now, this is my problem that they've gotten a bit lazy and aren't letting their creativity um, flourish the way that it should. So um, you may have to kind of get them started. But once you, you know, get those, that mind going, you'd be surprised what they can do. Dollar Tree, again, super simple puzzles. This simple 24 piece puzzle. Again, depending upon your child's age. I mean, if they're really young, 24 pieces is probably fine. If they're older, they have, um, you know, more pieces or whatever. Dollar Tree, puzzles. Water balloons. It's summer, it's hot. Show them how to fill up the balloons. Show them how to tie them. And guess what? 
endless amount of fun right there. If you want to, create some boxes and throw like tape the number 20 on one, the number 30 on one, and number 50 on one, and they can see who can throw, you know, their water balloons into those boxes, and those are points. Whoever scores the most points wins. Again, spend some time in your dollar store and um, look at what they have to offer. Get creative, think outside the box. You'd be surprised what children are interested in. All right, again, again, more Dollar Tree things. I went to Dollar Tree last week. These My Story things, I use these in my pre-K classroom. Children like filling out these kind of things. They can color on the edges. This is My Story, and it's got, um, it's basically a blank journal, and it's got 10 pages on the inside, and um, each page is something different. There you go. Did y'all ever do any of these for your little, those felts, poster boards, or whatever? Again, Dollar Tree. Comes even with some markers. If you don't have any markers, guess what? Comes with markers. Now, I'm, it is Dollar Tree. They're not great markers. So, if you have markers on hand, use those. These won't be able to fill up this whole heart or whatever. Okay, activity books. Again, depending upon your child, it may be good for you, may not be not, or may not, whatever. This is just a, um, you know, word search type thing. Dollar Tree's got tons. They got Sudoku, they got crossword puzzles, they got word searches, they got the um, various ones, coloring books, whatever. Tons of those. Um, I'm trying to figure out how to do this. All right. Now, I'm going to tell you here, because one of your best things you can do is grab you some Ziploc bags and throw you random things inside of it. Inside of here, I have just some stencils I already have on hand. If you have a child that really likes arts and crafts, I just regular stencils here. Um, and I also have alphabets, you know, just standard A through Z, I think it's got the numbers in it too as well. So grab you some Ziploc bags and put an entire activity in a bag. So inside I've got the stencils, I got ABC stencils, I got some paper. So all you need is something to color with, write with, whatever. There you go. Same thing here, origami. Throw you some origami papers on the inside and then some instructions on how to make various things. On this one, I think this is an origami fox. If you go to Google and type in origami for kids and hit the images tab and then select whatever image you want and you can easily print out what you want in instructions. Then all you have to do is stick your paper in there and guess what? Child comes up and says, I'm bored. Throw this bag at them. See what happens. Yep. So there's that. I showed you that. Actually. Okay. I'm trying to restack in here in my box. I'm just going to show you after. Yep. All right. So next thing, if you need to, Grab a um, folder. I have placed, I just taped an index card on here. It says scavenger hunt. And for this activity, you will need some writing utensils. Whatever color pencils, markers, crayons, whatever you want. Open it up. And I have printed off in household scavenger hunt. And it's got, you know, how many bathtubs do you have in your home? How many toilets? How many muffin pans? Run around, they can run around the house and mark, you know, count and mark how many you have. Again, put everything you need together that way so when they come to you and say, I'm bored, you can easily pull it out and give them something without having to spend much of the time that you need. I mean, it's, I mean, parents are busy. So for you to take time and sit there and think of something that, you know, your child can do, 
you don't want to take away from your time. So put this stuff together. That way it doesn't take much thought on your part. Um, here we go. Number one. Here is a, um, just a folder. It says, draw a scene from your favorite story. You need crayons, markers, color pencils, whatever, writing utensils. On the inside, take one of your favorite books. And in all honesty, this is one of my favorite books. If you have not read the true story of the Three Little Pigs, please get it. Please, please, please. I am absolutely in love with stories that um, take it from an, the basically the villain's point of view and tell their story. This is a incredible story. So inside this folder, I've got the book, I've got the paper. So all they need is something to write with. They got the tab on that. So depending on your child, depending on your um, what they're capable of, everything is right there. Okay, only a couple things left. Of course, I'm gonna throw a um, box of crayons in there because all these other activities say you need writing utensils, you wanna have them available. Even though you may have colored pencils, you may have markers, you have may, some, may have something else, make them available. That way so it's easy for you to just pass it over. All right, last, like two things. Is anyone still sticking with me? Any questions? Am I saying anything redonkulous? All right, anyway. <laughs> um, this is by far super simple. Grab you a popsicle stick. Take a whole bunch of string or yarn or whatever, wrap it around the popsicle stick. If you have young, 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 young children, wrap some masking tape around the end of the masking tape because you're creating a sewing activity for them. Whatever buttons you have on hand, preferably if they have larger holes or larger openings for the younger children. Of course, you want to make sure that your string matches the holes or whatever. Of course, you would have a whole lot more buttons and things that they could thread, whatever. Put it all together. You'd be surprised. Tell them they can make a necklace, bracelet, they can make something for grandma, whatever. Sewing buttons, put it all together. Last one I got here that I physically have here, um, pipe cleaners. On the front of this bag, build with pipe cleaners. Can you, and then on the front of the bag, I have made suggestions. Can you make the letters of your name? A large square, a building. Children with creative imaginations should be able to take a pipe cleaner and understand that if they sit here and twist the ends and piece them together, they can build various shapes and everything. So, again, super simple. This is something that encourages the, the imagination and um, gets them busy. That's the biggest thing. You just want to keep them busy. Once you encourage that Im imagination, there is no telling what they turn around and um, suggest next. So I've got all of that in this box here. So let me see if I can get it all back in here. Now this box is not at all full. That is what's awesome. Is that this box is far from full. So while I've given you like 20 different ideas or something here, you can very easily throw in another 15, 20, or whatever, depending on, you know, what all, and of course this is exactly the way that I had it originally. But, there is still loads of space in here, and had I packed it a little bit differently, it'd be even more. But, you've got still loads of space in here, so parents, you can really, 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 really arm yourselves 
with whatever your children come at you with. Now, a couple more ideas. Um, you'd be surprised how fascinated children are with just giving them a handful of nuts, bolts, screws, or whatever. The idea of, you know, piecing everything together is mind-blowing to them. Um, sidewalk chalk, watercolor paints. Um, if you've got children that are starting to cook on their own and starting to have a say-so in what they want to eat, throw in a bunch of grocery ads and allow them to um, help plan meals. Um, work on creating a budget. Say that, you know, we need to buy this much food or this much at the grocery store. See what you guys can come up with in the grocery ads. Um, one of the most simplest things you can do, put a twin sheet. Run to Walmart, grab a $5 twin sheet, tablecloth, whatever. Let them build a fort. If it's too hot outside, they can build a fort inside. Just throw the sheet at them and say, build a fort. Tell them that you know they can do it in the living room, they can't move this, they can move this. Give them the stipulations. Let them go at it. Um, you remember those looms? Um, I know we had them when we were younger. Those looms where they, you know, looped and everything, they made pot holders and everything. They got those at Hobby Lobby for like six bucks or something like that. And um, doing our Ziploc bag for like a spa day type thing with like a face mask. Um, nail polish, bubble bath, kind of stuff in it. Really, this is all just brainstorming. You can get a box and fill it with so many ideas. And the thing is, before you get to the end of the box, you can probably easily brainstorm more ideas and easily fill it bef again before you get to the bottom. That way so you do not have to hear the I'm bored again. And I'm pretty sure that after some time, your children will not come to you and say, I'm bored. Because you keep giving them things to do. Of course, <laughs> me as a parent would be like, hey, you're bored. Go clean the bathroom. Go vacuum the living room. Go gather up all the trash. There's always that. So, think about your child. Think about their age, their interest, what they're capable of. You want to make sure it's age appropriate. You're not going to ask a 12 year old to do something you would ask a two year old to do and vice versa. So please, 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 all you got to do is go on to Google or Pinterest, wherever and type in board box, board and buster, whatever you get loads and loads and loads of ideas. So hopefully, if you're joining in this evening, they give you a few ideas. Hopefully that um, helps you out a little bit. Because it is 6.04. Crap, I have talked too much. Um, next Monday, we are talking about Father's, Father's Day. <laughs> Father's Day. Um, we are making a quick Father's Day dessert. We are making a brownie trifle. Way to a tan. I'm having issues this evening. A way to a man's head is through his stomach. So, and honestly, it's probably mine too. We're going to make a brownie trifle. Super quick, super easy brownie trifle. And we're going to start with the um, chocolate cream pie martini. So, because I have already gone far too long, I've talked too much. Hope y'all have a great rest of your week, and I will see y'all next Monday. Bye.